Hi, Steven here from Core Electronics. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about how to make a natural disaster sensor project with the micro bit. So this is a four part video and throughout the series, we'll show you how to make a wind sensor, a temperature sensor and a seismic sensor that will all transmit their data back to a single base station connected to a computer where you can plot your data and review everything that you record. In this section though, we're going to talk to you about making a temperature sensor. So every micro bit has a temperature sensor built into the board, but for this project, we're going to show you how to use an external sensor. And we're going to use an LM35DZ. It's an analog temperature sensor. They're about as simple as they get. The one downside is that they take five volts and they don't deliver a reliable reading at under five volts. Sometimes you might be all right. So we're going to use a breadboard power supply. Um, this provides either five volts or 3.3 volts to the breadboard. So we have it available. So we're running, we're powering our temperature sensor off of five volts from one side of our breadboard and the, the output is going to the analog in of our micro bit. And we're also powering our micro bit off of the same breadboard power supply just with three volts. And we're going straight to our power and ground on the board. And you may have noticed we're also using a SparkFun um, micro bit breakout board. This gives you this it gives you access to all the pins on on the micro bit. There's without it, you can alligator clip effectively to just three analog inputs. So you could alligator clip the um, the temperature sensor without much trouble. But if you use the breakout, then we could connect up to five of these simultaneously and use the use the temperature sensor on the micro bit at the same time if we wanted to. So we could make an array of temperature sensors and record all that data. Um, so let's take a look at the, let's take a look at our wiring diagram. Um, as you can see, our micro bits connected to a breakout. We have our micro bit powered off of a power directly from our breadboard power supply. And our temperature sensor is goes power and ground to the five volts and our data goes to analog in zero. Now, while we're here, we should take a look at the inputs and outputs of the LM35DZ. It's really important that you get the, the voltage in the ground right on it. If you wire them up backwards, it gets really hot really fast. It'll probably let the smoke out. So um, this diagram here that's on our tutorial page is if you're looking at the bottom, so looking straight onto the wires, um, which pin is which. So if we take a look at our code, we initialize our program by setting our radio power to maximum. We set our radio group to one, so all our, our micro bits are on the same channel. And we start with a power up message of temp. So we know this is a temperature device. So when I turn the power on, it scrolls temp across the LED array. And we constantly take a reading from the temperature sensor and um, then plot that to the device and we send it over the radio to our central station. So as we can see here, we have a bit of a formula to convert the analog reading from our LM35 to a usable temperature. So we first multiply our input by 100 and then we divide that by um, 1024, which is the, the maximum reading that we can get off of the analog pin. So from zero to 1024. And that gives us the increments of voltage that we want. Now, if you want to find the formula yourself to calculate temperature using an analog temperature sensor, the base formula is available on the data sheet for the device. And there's a link to it in our tutorial page. <clears throat> and you can also add a resistor in line to 
to gain even more increments and, and make your temperature sensor more sensitive. So we plot our readings onto the plot onto our LEDs and we transmit that same value over to our receiver. That wraps up this section on creating a temperature sensor for our natural disaster sensor project for the micro bit. Stick around, in the next section, we'll talk about making a remote seismic sensor.